response to your question. Sigurd Gudjonsson from Iceland. He'll be talking about fish passage facilities in a new hydropower plant in Iceland. Yeah, dear, dear colleagues, nice to be with you here in, in Trondheim once again. And I'm going to give you a little bit of information about a new uh, power plant uh, at this plant in River Thjósá in Iceland. Uh, <coughs> river Thjósá is, is the longest river in Iceland and it's a big one, 360 cubic. It's partly uh, glacier fed and it has run off from two of the largest glaciers in Iceland. It has already seven power plants and many reservoirs. Uh, the first power plant in there was built in 69 and the last one in 2014. And due to the flow regulation of Thjósá, the, the flow is now more even. And as large part of the glacier silt stops in the reservoir, it's not as turbid as it used to be. And this new power plant is 93 megawatt, and this plant at Kvammur, 55 kilometers from the estuary. Here you can see the watershed and some of the reservoirs. Uh, in Thjósá, we have the dominant species in there is Atlantic salmon, but we also have brown trout and Arctic char. Uh, <clears throat> and the total run of natural salmon has been measured since 2013, and it's on average around 10,000 fish. Uh, fishing method is mainly in net, but the rod fishery is increasing and they are catching about 44% of the of, of, of the average uh, of the run. And the fishing effort is relatively constant. So we can use the, the catch data to uh, figure out the, the run. The population was smaller earlier. Uh, but it has increased due to uh, uh, more even flow and less turbid water. We have been doing monitoring there for many years uh, and both physical and chemical parameters, but also the biota in there. And it's, it will continue. And we have also done uh, thorough research on the migration time of the smolts. That's important for the power plant. As the cuts data in River Thjósá, it, it goes way back. And <coughs> as I said, because of the less turbid water and more even flow, the population in there has increased. And uh, also we built a fishway in Budi waterfall and opened new habitat for the salmon and that it increased the population also. So today the population of salmon in Thjósá is four times larger than it used to be. Here is a map. You can see the, the waterfall of Budafoss where we put in a new fishway in 1991 and inside the red circle is the Kvammur power project. And we can take a closer look. Uh, the river will be dumped and we will form a new reservoir called Hagalon and below that there will be uh, limited water and but below the outlet of the power plant, the river be, will be as it is today and also above the waterfall. Here you can see a picture of the Humber project and 
we have uh, a minimum e-flow below the dam of 10 cubic uh, meters per second and but <coughs> that's uh, the lowest it will get and but during summer the average will be around 40 cubic uh, per second <coughs> this is done to secure the the fish migration uh, up to the dam and over the dam uh, but also to maintain the biota in that part of the river uh, because this is a, a, a glacier fed river and it's turbid the sun or the light only goes down to one meter so everything below that is dark so it was measured and calculated that uh, 10 cubic producing similar amount of, of, of life as the river during summer today. Uh, well, that's a, a drawing and you can see the, the outlet of the, the, the powerhouse down there and you see these clouds. I will go further into that and this is the end of the reservoir and intake to the powerhouse and uh, a small bypass it's an overflow bypass uh, and a fishway where we meet, uh, two waterways uh, are joining or meeting one large another small we can have a problem for the fishes to find their way, but we we solve that by by taking a, a large pool where the fish can detect the current from the small flow, and this has been done in another river in the North River Blanda, and also below many of the Icelandic fishways. The fishway in River Kvammur is a vertical slot fishway. It has a uh, low slope, 1 to 13. The height between pools are 0.3 meters to allow resident trout to travel up and, up and down. And the total height of the fishway is 13 meters. The water level in the reservoir is constant. Uh, that's better for the biota. Uh, there is a considerable current through the through the through the reservoir so the fish should find its way but it could delay the make migration there and we will change the habitat uh, now we have salmon and trout in there but uh, uh, salmon will disappear in this part of the river this is very suitable habitat both for brown trout and tiar. Uh, the surface flow small bypass is also situated. It's located all over the power plant intake. Uh, it takes the uppermost one meter of the water and 10% of the flow goes through the bypass and uh, the waterway from the intake of the small bypass is designed in a way to carry the smolts gently to the river below. There are no short corners. The current velocity in there is two to four meters per second, and there are no large or certain current changes. And it's designed in a way that the water will not be super saturated with air. And it will be operated during the small migration, uh, usually mid-May to mid-June, but it will be monitored when we have the smolts running. And we have tested this both with number numerical models and a scale model that was built in laboratory. And based on those results, the design was improved after the building of the power plant, we will be monitoring the fish migration, both the up 
uh, stream migration of salmon using radio tact and also the smalls to see uh, how they managed to go go through the reservoir and using the the small bypass and finally i want to thank many people my co-workers at landsvirkjun uh, helgi johansson and olive rose and my colleague at the marinat the freshwater research institute thank you